Welcome back uh, to, I think, I think it's episode nine, I'm going to guess. Uh, I'll stick with that. Nine of my Toronto Maple Leafs franchise mode on NHL 19. Today we were going to be going through the second draft. And I thought I'd start up with the draft lottery. Um, Ottawa are kind of a little bit thriving on here. Uh, they didn't win this cup or anything, but they've still got Carlson putting up points, killing the game. And they've just made the playoffs and then got the second overall pick from Edmonton. So I I don't know what's going on with them. But this is the latest set of draft rankings. Let's take a look. Are there any more gems or busts to speak of? That's really what I want to see, to be honest. So we have low elite gems. Some busts here still. Nobles, yeah. Okay, so Nobles, last time I looked at him, he was listed as a medium elite. He's now listed as a, a a medium top nine. So he's not bad. He's he's fine. He, I'm not going to pick him at medium top nine in that first round. No other busts. Zancaro still there. So who do we want to pick? This is listed by potential, you'll see. And basically, this is the top six of the draft. And that is what we have listed as great potential. Other than that, we're kind of guessing. What I think I'm likely to do is pick Gamash. Because he could be just a top six guy. But he could also be elite. Probably isn't. But I feel like it's worth a shot at that sort of guy. Um, Apostopolopoulos. Great name. Raymond Apostopolopoulos. I've sent scouts out for guys like... Robotai and it's just not brought anything back. All I can do is hope that we get a bit more information back before the actual draft takes place. We've got a few guys that are low, not many low elite guys. How about top sixes? I mean, we're probably going to get someone who's top six in this first round. There's some guys here that could be worth picking up as well. Lots of low top sixes. So why is McDowell? So much higher rated than someone like uh, our boy who's dropped out of the draft last year. Uh, Will Reed's not horrible. I'll pick Zancaro this year, you know. If if Zancaro doesn't go before the seventh round, I'm going to take that dude. I feel bad for him. Eight, 840 is mad. And he's not even that bad. He's got bad skating, basically. And he's not great at face-offs. He's not good at hockey. But other than that, he's all right. He'll be really low overall, but we I'm pretty sure that last year he popped up as a low top six confirmed. So I don't know why we've got less and less certain about that. Let's uh, let's just go forward into the draft. We'll see what's available when we get in there. Retired players first, though. So we don't have any, as far as I'm aware. We may do, actually. I haven't said that. We do have... No, we don't. How... But then Chara is just still... Still doing it. So there you go. And we've got Williams at 38 as well. Uh, Hosa goes, though, from the Coyotes. Pommonville from the Blue Jackets. Kunitz from the Senators. Stemniak, Gionta, Koki Malone. Respect, sir. Should have signed Koki Malone. I didn't realise he was a free agent. Oh, man, I regret that now. You don't know what I'm talking about. Saying Koki Malone. Then there's stuff went on. Um, also, Koki Malone is a nickname that I coined for him in uh, in my EHM save, which is still going, and I still enjoy thoroughly. So new episodes of my Minnesota Wild save coming regularly. Uh, anything else that I need to check out? No. Oh, and also, and in all seriousness, if you haven't checked out, if you really like GM modes and stuff like that, and you haven't checked out EHM, then maybe do that maybe check out my series if you want to do that if you want to check it out before you buy it or whatever but you can pick it up for like four dollars on sale maybe even less and then you can add <laughs> man i'm going into a side note here there's a there's a, a site called the blue line that makes custom rosters and face packs and stuff for them so you can have like all the real players all the real faces and all that stuff and it's sick it's really good fun so here we go. I'm just going to go into the draft. I'm not going to look up what we what we were going to pick up before that. We just want to go figure out where we're picking. I think it's like 24th. Damn it. 
26th, okay. So, the Senators have 28 and 2. So, here we go. We well, want to look at what we can get 26th. I may go off the board and pick that guy I mentioned before. But do we have any more information? Any more at all information about gems and busts? We do not have any more gems. We do not have any more busts. Do we have any better information about the guys who are higher in the draft? Gamash is probably going to be the guy, to be honest. Or Blatney, maybe. Blatney's listed higher in the draft, so maybe he's been playing an A-plus competition. And he's pretty good, actually. I don't think he's going to be medium elite, but if he's medium top six, yeah, his attributes are pretty good. Otherwise, we've got this guy. Ooh, Rod Blair. We put up 17 points in 45 games, which doesn't sound amazing, but in the SHL, as an 18-year-old, that's pretty good. He's not quite as good. But okay, similar to Tidus Sagum. That least similar to Theo Fleury. I'll probably take Hellenius at some point. He played a bunch of games as a grinder in the Liga. And is very, very good physically. I suspect he could even be an enforcer, to be honest, but he could be all right. Uh, okay, let's go to around the point where we're going to be picking because it is going to be touch and go on whether or not these guys are going to be available. McCutcheon has put up a lot of points, over a point a game in the US and the QMJHL, and has okay attributes, similar to David Backers. Okay, uh, Johnson, A plus competition, 17 points in Liga. Ooh, he might be someone I would like to pick up, but a couple of weaknesses there concern me, similar to Milan Lucic. That that kind of concerns me as well, to be honest. Harris, C plus competition, C minus competition even. Not bad though, he's an okay player. Uh, someone has just made a pick. They picked the franchise guy, obviously. That was who was always going to get picked first overall. Blair there, Alberts. Unless he's amazing, I don't want to pick him up. He's not. Nothing amazing. Zyla, I've sent a scout out to him. Didn't really get much information back. Smith Pelly, again, unless he's already great. Not going to pick him up because it's, it's it's like low risk, low reward. Um, Hakana is interesting. A plus competition, but he's, he's not as good as someone like uh, a Blair. Was it Blair? Or was it Blatney? As Blatney, I'd love to pick up Blatney because I just think I think he's already probably going to be mid seventies or low seventies potentially because of the B minuses. But his skating and his shot are already very good, so that tempts me. Otherwise, um, someone like Bruce Johnson is also not bad. Yeah, maybe Blair. There's a few options for us. There's a few options. Do I just want to risk it? How about Fritz Meyer playing in the Dell, which is not a bad league. And he's not bad, but we don't know what he is, really. But Akana, we kind of know that he's okay-ish, but not amazing. But he is also injury-prone, so a bit of a nightmare there. Hadar, we know nothing about the player type. No, we know nothing about the overall. Sorry, we know exactly the player type. Defensive defenseman for Legash. Le, 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 Le Le um... Yep, and then Haydar, second overall to the centre, says they pick up an elite centre. Let's just, I don't think I want to move up because I don't know that it's worth it, what we'd have to give, and we don't know for sure that the guy we want will be available at those picks, so I'm going to go ahead and sim ahead. Blair did go, Johnson went, so did Blackney. So, I mean, the three guys that we were looking at have all gone, but there are still options for us available. McCutcheon also... Uh, Elite Enforcer. Didn't spot him. Did I? Or was that the guy I said that potentially could be an Enforcer? No, that was later on. Cool. Okay, well, the, the guys that we kind of thought we'd pick up aren't there. So the people we're looking at really are slightly lower down. Maybe Fritz Meyer. B level of competition. Put up some points, but not a lot. And has decent, decent attributes. Good skating. Decent puck skills. He's fine. The other one, the other ones are Gamash and Lakana. So Gamash, we know is not that bad. You know, I thought 
I, for some reason, I let my head he was much worse. Akana is pretty good, but we know that he's low elite. No, we don't even know that he's low elite. Does that mean he could be medium elite? I kind of think I'm going to go off the board then and take the gem. Because I could pick Fritz Meyer, but we don't have any idea what he's going to be. Like, so it's either Hakana or Gamash. Gamash is medium elite, but we know a decent amount about him. He's not listed as a gem. Low elite, we know a decent amount about him, but he's not confirmed as low elite. What do we need more? S centers, forwards, or defensemen? We know that these guys are low elite, for sure. And they're not bad. That guy's not bad anyway. A plus competition, and he's not bad either, you know. Mikhail Berglund could be a good pick here for someone. A shooting category. Ooh, that's made me doubt everything. I think I'm going to go for one of these two guys, though. It has to be one of these two guys, I think. I think I'm going to go with Hakana. Because he's listed as a gem, and because there's that element of doubt about his potential, I, th I, I think he could still be a medium elite, right? And he's listed as a gem. I'm going to pick him. I'm going to go off the board. In terms of well, like five picks, maybe I may I may regret not picking up Fritz Meyer. I may regret not picking up Gamash or whatever his name was, but I I hope that's the right decision. Let's take a look at the picks we've got left. I don't think I want to go and move any more picks. I'm not worried about that really. So we haven't got a second round pick. I think we used it for Williams. We've got third, two fourths, fifth, sevenths. So. I think I'm just going to use the picks I've got. In fact, hang on, do I want to move any contracts out? There's, there's a couple of contracts that I might want to get rid of before the draft because a couple of them don't look great and I might need to use it to, to re-sign or... Uh, not before the draft, before the re-sign phase. Amanik has an extension. Okay, not worried about that. So the players we need to think about maybe moving are someone like a Zaitsev, who is not good value for his deal, or it's a long deal as well. At least thirty-three. We're gonna be we're gonna be struggling on defence. Basically, is what I'm thinking. I mean, I I think Gord was a mistake. I might consider moving him as well. How many points did he put up this year? did okay he was bouncing between the second and third lines so 40 points isn't horrible but is it, it's not worth 3.8 million for me i don't think we do need to sign johnson and brown but johnson obviously being the more important one because i think he grows uh anyone else i really feel the need to move i think it's one of those guys if we do want to move anyone and i think i probably do Gord or Zaitsev, I think, has to go. I think I might try and move Zaitsev and see if we can pick up another defenseman. Maybe who's comparable in terms of overall. Um, we're looking for... Oh, someone's just gone. I mean, someone like Moore has got a long time left on his contract, but only till he's the same age and he's significantly cheaper. How did John Moore do this year? He, put, he was a minus 12. He didn't do great, did he? Didn't do great last year either. He is a, obviously a defensive defenseman, so you can't expect him to get as many points. Well, the, pick, the picks have all been, have been being made as I'm looking. I didn't want to show you me flicking through the whole lot of it. And I know that we haven't got a pick for a while, so I'm not too worried about it. I mean, I'm kind of looking at another one to be made. See, that I'm kind of looking at Cal Foot, to be honest. His value's not that high. Not 100% sure what he is, but he did not not too bad at all. And he's got good defensive attributes. He's got a good deal. That's why I'm looking at him. Will I be able to do something along those lines? I don't think it would take that much, right? And uh, to be honest with you, Zaitsev, even if Foot doesn't end up being the 82 current overall, there's potential that you could get there anyway. And... Even if he doesn't grow, I kind of just like to not have Zaitsev's big contract, overvalued contract, as far as I can tell, on the books. Like, I wouldn't mind giving up something else on top of that 
to make that happen. Nothing massive, but someone like a Gautier who's an RFA. So it says they don't want to give him up, which makes me think that he might even be better than what I'm thinking he is. Maybe we can tempt them with some some of this value here. Oh, now nah, let's just throw draft picks in. Let's throw them in a fourth and a fifth. How about that? I'd be totally fine with that. Isn't sufficient at all. So how about if we offer them a third? I'd still be completely fine with that. Isn't sufficient at all. They don't want to get rid of him is the issue here. How about, how about if we throw you in a little bit of value as well with someone like a Grundstrom. Again, totally fine with that. So a decent amount to give up, but I, I still think this could be worth it. I'll try it with a fourth maybe. How about that? Philly's fourth. Ejected too far off. Maybe this isn't going to be possible. Third, I'll try it with then. Uh, yeah, they basically just don't seem to want to give it up. One of the fourths, our fourth, the later fourth by one pick. I think that's going to be too difficult to do. I, I'm just not going to worry. I think I'm just going to have to deal with that contract or get rid of it for pennies. But he's too valuable on our team right now for us to just trade him away without getting anything, anything back. So... Not going to do that. I'm going to keep him on the team for a while. Yep, there was no defenseman that I really wanted on the block. So let's sim to the user pick. That's in the third round. There's no point checking. Kravchenko, nice. Um, there was a Kravchenko who played in the camp, I think, for Calgary, which is why I just lost my head. But I don't know why, because you probably don't know that. But you, what are we looking at here? Oh, Gustav's Afanasenkov. Fanasenkov. A plus competition. He's a minus one. He's not bad. I, he's not bad. He might be the pick here. Bure is there. Kis, Kiskinen is okay. He's a grinder. Which makes me think he could be okay, but none of his attributes are that good. Valentini did okay. And he's okay. Anybody else that's worth looking at? Heard. Didn't. Did okay again. Attributes are okay. I think. Backstrom. A plus six games for year isn't great. Not not great at overall uh, numbers as well. Ratings. You know what I mean. Petrol. A plus competition. He's fine. I, I mean, I think. I know he's not going to be what it says he is. But I think Af Afanasenkov might be the guy. If he's a medium elite, I'll be absolutely astounded. Because he's only got the two star, the two uh, bar accuracy. If he's a medium top six, I'd be very happy. If he's a medium top nine, I'd be okay with that. Lower than that, I mean, would be disappointing. But playing in a good league as a defensive defenseman didn't embarrass himself. Potentially could be very, very good physically and not horrible anywhere else. He's 19, but I'm going to go with Afanasenkov. I don't mind picking over ages, so let's try that out. See what he's going to end up being. This is, I said this last time in my um, first draft video, that this, this is better, I think, a much better system. But you do lose a little bit when you take away the fact that I can't say, oh, I know, I know for a fact I've just made a great pick. I've got a lot of value in that one or whatever. We because we just don't really know. Uh, he could be awful and he could be incredible. He could be he could be a franchise. Like he he won't be. But he could be. But there's no there's no like immediate moment of, oh man, I've just got someone great. Which is both much better because it's far more realistic and a little bit less interesting to watch, I think. Apostopolopolis is not been great. He quite easily could be medium elite because he's a goalie and he's that low. But I'm going to go with the low elite confirmed gem. Duke Fane, fantastic name. Not great. We're picking a lot of defensemen. But he's got a low elite. He's listed as a gem. I'm just going to trust my scout on that one and take him. 
We do have the very next pick though, so we could pick someone like Apostopolopolis or we could pick anyone else. Basically, what are we looking at here? Where are we in terms of the scouting? There's 119 we're at now, so if we go by potential. We wouldn't be stretching too far to go for. Huh? My scout thinks Volkov could go now, actually. Lower the playmaker. Forward would be helpful at this point, I think. A plus competition. Not very physical in the slightest. Not physical in the slightest would be more of a sentence. But otherwise, not horrible. Jekimovs wouldn't be awful. Um, Tikhanov and Apostopolis are, are probably pretty good, I'd imagine. I think they would be they would be going off the board. I think I'm going to take Volkov. He's about about this point. It's not really stretching, but he's got some bees in there that make me think he could be okay. Might be switched to a winger if he's got terrible face-offs. But he's 18, playing in the Russian league, was a plus player. Potentially could be low elite. I think that'll be a decent pick if we can. View turns out to be what he says he's going to be, or what it says what it says he's going to be. I'm okay with that pick. So let's have a look at what is available for us. 150th overall. I mean, Apostopolis is still there, and I. I do think he's probably the best player available. Yeah, he's got to be the best player available there. Maybe Johnston would be a good pick as well. No confirmed medium top sixes or anything like that. We could pick up a low top six in maybe Swanson. He's okay. Can't right trigger skip between players here. That's a bit annoying. Jaffrey, nah. Defenseman, we've already picked up a few. There's a low starter confirmed, but chance that he's that good, that he a low starter ends up good, or lower than a low elite, or a medium starter. I, I think Apostolic is probably going to be okay. And it's not stretching that much to get him. Reaching is the word, not stretching. Uh, Kelly Johnston could be okay. I'm going to go with Apostopolis because goalies. And if our previous pick, Scrivens, I think it was Scrivens, was the goalie right? Doesn't work out. Then we have a backup option there. Giselski, sick name. He's a real person though, so I doubt that he's going to be that good on here. Right, so we're at 190-ish. 197 we're at. And Koi could be a decent pick, to be honest. Not horrible, not great offensively or skating, but... Probably going to be a decent defensive player, though he isn't right now. So what are we looking at? There's still some uh, Tikhanov is still available. Bulbrook is available. That will be going fairly far off the board. They're not that far off, actually, you know. Enroth or Bulbrook wouldn't be that far off. I do think the forward makes most sense as well. So let's take a look at Enroth. He played seven games as a potentially as a grinder. It was a minus one. C's kind of very standard. Bullbrook, A plus competition, one point. And okay ish. I think I'm going to take Bullbrook just as a. He could be quite good, but also might be horrible. I don't. There's just no way for me to really know. So. He's what's showing up as being potentially the best. Are there any gems left? No gems, no busts. Zancaro is potentially going to be my 7th round pick. Unless this is my 7th round pick, is it? What's this? I'm not, my math is, is, is gone. This is my 7th round pick. I have another one. I'm going to pick Zancaro with that one, I think. So yeah, let's, let's pick one of these other guys who's listed a bit higher up. Zancaro, just because I feel bad for the, for the kid. He's going to be horrible overall, but... Maybe all right. Having said that, would I want to pick up someone like Jaffrey, who's ranked 400, 600 spots above him, and is not bad? Zankara is not horrible. I'm going to pick Zankara in my next pick. So okay, the options then are Tikhanov, Bulbrook, or Emroth, and I've kind of in my head just now switched over to Emroth as the best option here. Tikhanov could easily be medium elite. We just have no idea. 
we have absolutely no clue really one bar out of four for how accurate that is and he could but i could easily be right i think i'm gonna go with the grinder i'm gonna go with emroth more forwards is probably the better idea we've got a couple of goalies that i think are gonna be okay and then uh Tikhanov went so we can uh check him out at some point but let's go for potential listing here and we're going to pick up the guy right here. Central Scouting has him ranked at 823. But Quentin Zankar Zankanaro, I think, is our guy. Low top six potential is realistically what he's going to be. I'm pretty certain that is exactly what he's going to be. I felt bad for him last year when he didn't go because I thought low top six is probably definitely worth a seventh round pick. He dropped again. And I've taken him this time. So there you go. Seven picks that we made. No real idea on how good they are right now or how good they could be. I kind of like that. And there, I mean, the late round picks are basically let's take a, a random shot on someone who could be good but could also be terrible. That's that's what those are for. So that's what I feel like I've done. We've just taken wild swings basically every round of the draft. So. So, I am going to end that there because I don't want this to cre to creep over 30 minutes. It's probably about 20-something right now. I'm going to end it here. The next episode, I'll do the re-sign phase and free agency and then do the pre-season to try and get an idea of what we're looking at. So, who enjoyed that video, please consider giving it a like. Maybe subscribe to this channel. Potentially check out my other content um, and maybe follow me on Twitch or something like that. Even if you don't do those things, it's just the fact that you watched it, I really appreciate. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.